Hello everyone, I'm Typhoon and in this lecture we are diving into the world of UDP traffic analysis using Wireshark. So we will break down how UDP packets appear in Wireshark's packet analysis tab, explore their variables and types, and gain hands-on experience in understanding this connectionless protocols. So uh, to begin, we will open the Wireshark, select your preferred network interface, in this case it might be Wi-Fi, Ethernet or virtual adapter, and start capturing packets. Since UDP is connectionless protocol, it behaves differently from TCP. Instead of establishing a session, UDP sends data without requiring acknowledgements or retransmissions, making it faster but uh, less reliable here. Now, to generate a UDP traffic, perform uh, one or more activities. You can use a voice over IP or online gaming applications, applications like Discord, Zoom, online multiplayer games, or live radio rely on UDP traffic for low latency communications. You can stream a video or listen to a music online. Platforms like YouTube, Twitch, Netflix, or Spotify use UDP for faster, buffer-free streaming. And you can also visit a website and perform a DNS uh, query. Every time you enter a website, your system sends a DNS request over UDP port 53 to resolve the domain name to an IP address. Uh, so um, we will first generate some UDP traffic here. So before we jump into packet analysis, let's break down the NS lookup command, which will generate um, UDP traffic here. The or DNS traffic of uh, so NS lookup oxalate.com. Uh, so, uh, what is NS lookup here? Uh, this is a name server lookup, is a command line utility used to query domain name systems, DNS servers, to resolve domain names into IP addresses. It is widely used for network troubleshooting, checking DNS resolution, and understanding how domain queries work. So here, this NS uh, lookup, this invokes the name lookup tool, which queries a DNS server. And we also have the oxali.com here. This is the domain name we are trying to resolve. Like this could be any website, but for this example, we are querying our own domain here. And here we are. Uh, we have generated some packets. Let's actually stop this. And when we run this command, uh, the computer uh, sends uh, a DNS query. Uh, to its configured DNS result. This could be a public DNS server like Google's 8.8.8.8 .8 or Cloudflare's uh, Cloud uh, 1.1.1.1 1 .1 or your internet service provider's default DNS server, whatever it, it is. So this DNS request is typically sent over UDP uh, port 53 because UDP is lightweight and faster for small queries. So DNS resolver process the query, uh, looks up the, for the IP address associated with this oxali.com. And here it find it. And the resolver sends back a response uh, containing IP address and in a DNS reply packet, which is also transmitted over UDP. So what we will do is um, once the Wireshark captures the packets, we will use Wireshark display filters to isolate the DNS traffic. You can use DNS like this. You can see oxalate.com, DNS oxalate.com. It also connectivity check ubuntu.com. It's che it checked the connectivity. Uh, so it might be automatically like a cron job. Uh, so we didn't, obviously we didn't do it. Um, and here, it might be because uh, when we sent the, before requesting uh, and the name, uh, name server, it sent the, Connectivity check to Ubuntu.com address. Here, here we are. And yeah, you can use Wireshark filters like DNS or UDP.port equals 53. This will all give, uh, give us almost the same result here. Now we can analyze the DNS request and response packets, uh, focusing on like the tr transaction ID uh, to track requests and responses. Uh, for the query time, uh, response time, and IP addresses returned here. So here what we will do is we will open this oxali.com DNS request. Let's actually make it smaller. Open this pane so we will see 
more detailed information here. Yeah, that's basically it. We have explained this lecture. This one is in previous lecture, but yeah, I can also explain it again. It won't hurt. And that's it. Now let's analyze this Wireshark DNS UDP packet step by step. First, we have the frame information uh, here. This is a layer one. This is a physical layer. Uh, we have the frame number uh, 36. This is the 36th packet captured in this session. Size on wire 193 um, and 1544. This is the total size of the frame when transmitted over the network. We have the captured size of 193. Uh, and uh, this is uh, this was captured on a network interface and uh, Wireshark captured the full packet without truncation. And uh, as well as we did in our TCP packet analysis here, we also have the timestamp since this is a layer one. Uh, so this tells us when the packet was captured, uh, it is useful for latency analysis and correlating with other packets in the session. Um, now, yeah, we also have the Ethernet 2. Um, the, we have the source and destination. We have the source MAC address and destination MAC address. And the type, which is IP version 4. Now we... Here we have the Internet Protocol uh, version for header. This um, this has the source IP address, uh, destination IP address, and version. Uh, so here what we see, header length is 20 bytes, uh, meaning this is a 20 bytes long header. IP header is 20 bytes long. Uh, 0100, uh, here it means that this is a version 4, IP version 4. We have the um, differentiated services field. Uh, we, yeah, here we have the, the different, different differentiated services code point is default. And the ECN mirror uh, here means explicit congestion uh, notification, uh, which also means the not congestion control here. And identification. Uh, so also total length, uh, this entire IP version for packet, including headers and payloads is 179 bytes. Identification, this identifies the packet for fragmentation, but since the flags show no Fragmentation, this is just an unique ID. Uh, and this uh, here, again, means uh, no fragmentation. Do not fragment. We have the TTL128. Uh, this is a time to live. You learned in previous lectures. Meaning it started with this value and will decrease for every router hop. The next protocol in this packet is UDP, which is expected for DNS queries. Header checksum, validation disabled. Um, so the checksum is used for error detection, but uh, validation is disabled in Wireshark. And the source address and destination address here, this confirms this is a local DNS um, lookup. So this IP address, which is my computer, asks to my router that uh, who does, like, what's the IP of oxali.com? And we also have the user datagram protocol header here. Uh, we have the source port 53. This confirms that the packet is a DNS response from the server. Destination port uh, 59,186. This is a random port. This is the client's random ephemeral port for receiving the response. UDP length is 159 bytes. This is the total size of the UDP header plus payload. And now let's scroll it down, open more tabs. And here we are. And also let's open the DNS response as well. OK. 
queries answers additional records also flags Here we are. Let's scroll it down and explain this as well. Yeah, now we have explained this user datagram protocol, uh, which is layer four. It has the so source port, destination port, length. But we have the interesting thing here. This is DNS domain name system, which is considered layer seven application layer. So this is a unique identifier, uh, the transaction ID uh, used to match the requests to responses. Uh, so the client's DNS query had the same transaction ID confirming that this is the response to that query. And uh, we have some 16-bit value values here. It has the it is the flags. Uh, so here, what we are seeing, the first is response. The message is a response. Uh, this confirms the packet is a response and not a query. We have the opcode uh, indicates this is a standard DNS request, uh, like not inverse or update query. We have the authoritative, authoritative uh, service is not an authority for domain. Uh, so this is, explains itself that uh, this means the responding servers is not authoritative name server for oxalate.com. It's likely forwarded the query. We have the truncated, so message is not truncated, um, fits with the UDP size limit as well. Uh, recursion desired to query recursively. Uh, so the client requested recursive resolution, letting the DNS resolver fetch the results on its behalf. Recursion available uh, as well one. So uh, the server supports recursive queries, meaning it can query other DNS servers if needed. And this, this is zero. It's not reserved. Um, and we also have the answer authenticated, uh, which is not authenticated. Answer authority portion was not authenticated by the server. This answer is, um, the answer is not cryptographically verified by the server. This is common for non-DNSSEC responses. Um, and we reply code. Uh, reply code, this is a query once successful and uh, valid records were returned. Now uh, we have the query information questions here. Uh, the client asks one DNS question, answers authority RRS and additional RRS. Now we, in the answer uh, section, we have seven uh, resolved IP address, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, as the answer says. Uh, so the DNS server resolved, all, uh, resolved oxalate.com to multiple IP ver version four IP addresses. This is a common for load balancing where a website has multiple IPs to distribute traffic across different servers. These IP addresses belong to Cloudflare, uh, suggesting that Oxali.com is using Cloudflare's network for security and performance. We has also have the additional records. You can see this here. Uh, now, the additional records, this is the response, contains uh, one additional record, which is this, type OPT. So you may ask what it is. This is an extended DNS record used for enhanced DNS capabilities, uh, such as larger packet size and DNSSEC extensions. And lastly, we have the response timing. Uh, so response in uh, 35, uh, this DNS request was sent in frame 
35 and this is this is the response is in frame packet 36 so it makes sense and uh, time this is a total round trip time rtt um is 0 0.07 seconds which is um, 72 milliseconds this means that the DNS query took just almost 73 milliseconds to complete, which is a reasonable time for internet-based DNS lookups. So this final analysis. So this is a DNS response packet answering a previous query for oxali.com. Uh, the DNS server provided seven IP version four addresses here for load balancing. The query was processed successfully with this uh, reply code uh, zero, uh, which is which, which means no error here. Uh, and the DNS, DNS result is not authoritative, um, but supports recursion here. The total response time was uh, 37, uh, 70, <laughs> 73 uh, milliseconds, indicating a relatively fast resolution. Uh, so this packet is perfect example of a successful DNS query resolution using UDP. Unlike TCP, UDP makes the process faster but lacks error recovery mechanisms. So the multiple IP addresses in the response uh, show how websites distribute traffic efficiently using DNS load balancing.